And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Bon Voyage. Written for Suspense by Murray Burnett. I looked at my watch. It was 6.16 of a Friday evening. I knew I had exactly 17 minutes before Hank Wilson, the night watchman of the bank, would be somewhere near the front door. I took a quick look around the office, turned the nameplate which said Alec Thompson face down on my desk, and closed the ledger on the garrison estate for the last time. Then I opened the box containing my new sports jacket, took out the jacket, opened the right-hand drawer of my desk, proceeded to fill the box with bundles of crisp new banknotes totaling $200,000. I packed them neatly in the box, getting a tremendous surge of satisfaction as each bundle slipped into place. Each bundle represented a neat withdrawal from the garrison estate, which I was handling for the Intercity Guarantee and Trust Company. A withdrawal which would take them a few months to unravel when I didn't return from my two-week vacation. Carefully tied the twine around the suit box, exactly as it had been tied. As I put on the exceptionally loud sports jacket, which the box had contained, I glanced again at my watch. Plenty of time. I walked over to the closet door, opened it, and looked at myself in the mirror. I knew it was foolish, but I couldn't resist patting myself on the back. The jacket covered my business suit jacket perfectly. No one could see that I was wearing a jacket over a jacket. And then, satisfied that I had left no loose ends, I closed the closet door, turned, walked to my office door, opened it, and started down the long corridor leading to the street and escaped for me with $200,000. I looked at my watch again. It was 6.29. I was four minutes early, but Hank would be within earshot. I decided I couldn't wait. Hank! Hank! Coming, Mr. Thompson. As I heard him start down the corridor toward me, his footsteps kept time with my heart. I had staked everything on my knowledge of Hank Wilson and his habits. But I knew he was supposed to look in the box that I carried under my arm. Through working, Mr. Thompson? All through, Hank. You're all set for your vacation? Mm Mm-hmm. You're on the same place you did last year up at the lake? Same place. Wife and kid, too? Oh, they're already up there. I think after five years, I'd be able to put my hand on the right key fast, wouldn't you? You see, you're in sort of a hurry, too. Oh, that's all right, Hank. I've got time. Look, Mr. Thompson, you can't kid me. What do you mean? I've been around here too long not to know exactly what goes on. I know how anxious you are to get out of this place and up to the lake. Well, Hank, I guess I've got to admit that you're right. I found it. Hey, just a minute. Yes? This. What you got? This? Well, it it could be $200,000. Maybe a million. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, could be. Well, you know the rules. Oh, yes, 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 I know them. You're supposed to examine every package going out of here. That's my job. But I've seen your old jacket often enough. Hey, looking at that new one you're wearing blinds me. Oh, you still don't approve? Hmm? Look, everybody to his own taste, I always say. But that sure is a wild jacket for you, Mr. Thompson. Well, I'll open it if you want, let you take a peek at my other jacket. Oh, you know, I was just kidding. You're okay, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Whatever you say. Like I said before, I've been around here too long not to know just what goes on. You're just lucky Bill Hagen isn't on duty tonight. Oh, don't think I don't know it. Bill's a stickler for all the rules. I don't have to tell you. You know how Bill is. Oh, yes, yes, I know just how he is. Well, so long, Mr. Thompson. Have yourself a real good vacation. Oh, thank you, Hank. I'm sure I will now. I walked into the night with a box containing $200,000 under my arm. 
I looked at my watch, 6.33, plenty of time. 11 minutes to my apartment in a cab, 10 minutes more to clean up the apartment, pick up my luggage, transfer the money to a special case I had made for it, and even with traffic, not more than 27 minutes to the dock and the steamship Concordia, which was waiting to take me to a brand new and wonderful life. Attention, please. All ashore that's going ashore. Visitors I looked out over the scene from the... Very topmost deck of the Concordia, liking everything I saw, thinking that in a very few minutes the city would be lost to view in the little wisps of fog that were already beginning to curl about the deck. And as I looked, Celia came walking down the deck. And as always when I saw her, she created a moment of excitement in me. She stood a few feet away from me and then she said... Exciting, isn't it? I said, it's exciting, a ship sailing. And it's something to live for a moment like this. Your first trip? Yes, very first. Then I can't ask you if that whistle means we're sailing. Well, I imagine it's a warning whistle. I won't believe it until we're actually moving. No, we will be in a few minutes. A few minutes. I still can't believe that in only a few minutes those buildings, the city will slide away from me forever. And you won't be sorry? No. No. Oh, Alex, oh. Celia, Celia, stay where you are. But, but you do as I tell you. We're alone. There's no one but us here on this deck. Look, we are not supposed to know each other. We're to meet casually aboard ship. Now, that is the way I've planned it. I have to know. Is everything all right? Everything is fine. You're sure? Yes, fine. Everything is fine. But I don't mean just the money. Your wife and son. Look, I have told you. I have done all that I can for them. Now, that is settled. And you're not sorry? No regrets? No, no regrets. For the past five years, I have been mixing up the books of the Garrison Estate so that I could take $200,000 in cash and be sure that the cleverest bookkeeper will take months to unravel it. But when I made this decision, I worked everything out, every detail perfect. Now, nothing is going to spoil it now. We're on our way. Just two strangers meeting aboard ship. And meeting a little prematurely, perhaps. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. We're talking about the sailing. We don't know each other. Well, then let's keep it that way, shall we? All right. This is strictly a vacation. Now, as soon as we sail, we should arrange about our tables in the dining room. Aren't we going to sit at the same table? No, no. It is care that pays off. It's the little things that can trip you. All right, Alec. Anything you say. Celia. Celia, I love you. And we are going to have a life that we want. But only if we remember that it is the little things that count, the tiniest little things. It's because I was so careful, so exacting about every detail that we got this far. Because I figured everything out. Because I... Alec, what is it? Oh, no. Alec, what's wrong? A little thing, a tiny, stupid little thing. What thing? Alec, tell me, please. What can I do? What can I do? Alec, what is it? What? What's the matter? What's the matter? I just happened to think of it. Last night at my apartment, I was checking over everything for the last and final time. And I put it down on a piece of scrap paper. And then I, I threw the paper in the basket. That paper? What did you put on it? The cost of our tickets for this trip. The... Oh, well, only that? You gave me a terrible scare. I couldn't imagine. Celia, you don't understand. They will search my apartment when they find the money missing from the office. They'll search everywhere, and they will find that little piece of paper. But there are only numbers on it. No one will know what they mean. The police will. They will figure out exactly what those numbers mean. The price of two one-way trips to France. By that time, we'll be safe. No, not as safe as I'd planned. As soon as they find out that we went to France, they are halfway to us. According to my figuring, it would have taken them a month to know that we went first to France. Now that piece of paper ruins everything. could be wrong, Alec. Maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe you tore it up or burnt it. No, no, no. It's in that basket. Why did I do such a stupid thing? A little thing like that just... Attention, to a little please. Thing. Attention, all passengers. Due to the fog, the sailing has been delayed three hours. Alec, are you... Any passenger wishing to go ashore may do so, but must be back aboard at least one hour before sailing time. Two hours. No, Alec. Two hours. Please. It's fate. It's luck. Don't try it, Alec. Please. Why not? I can get that paper and be back here it's before... It's wrong. It couldn't be more right for us. Two hours. Plenty of time. Two hours. Celia, I am just going to the apartment and I'll be right back. I was lucky. Everything worked as planned. I congratulated myself for not throwing away the keys to my apartment when I left. I was going to reserve that pleasure until we were far out at sea. I opened the door, and as soon as I did, I knew that something was wrong. The light was on. Oh, hello, Alec. 
Well, what's the matter, Alice? You look... Why, you're absolutely white. Were you frightened because all the lights were on? Helen, I... Uh... Are you all right, dear? All right? Yes, yes, um... Well, what are you doing here? Why... Uh... I left Ted with some friends at the lake. Thought I'd keep you company in the trip up there tomorrow. <laughs> this is a surprise, isn't it, Alice? Yes, yes, Helen, it is quite a surprise. You sure you're all right? Yes, yes. There's nothing wrong. Will you stop asking me the same thing over and over? I'm all right. There's nothing wrong. I'm all right. You don't have to shout, Alice. Well, why are you looking at your wife? I am not shouting. I just didn't expect to find you here, that's all. You sound like you're sorry. Believe me, it's not that. Then what? Well, I, um, I... Helen, you shouldn't have left Ted up at the lake alone. You you ought to get on the next train going back there. Ted's in good hands. With strangers. Friends, I told you, George and Edna Summers. Now, you know how fond they are of Ted. Just the same. Oh, you're such a worrier. Concerned about the littlest thing. Well, you can't be too careful. Ted's all right. Will you stop worrying about him? When we get up to the lake tomorrow, you'll see uh, Helen, Helen. Yes? Helen, I, I, I'm not going up with you tomorrow. Why? You'll have to go without me. Well... Then there is something wrong. Now, what is it, Al? Well, I haven't got all night to stand here and answer ridiculous questions. Look, now, maybe you'll feel better after a cup of coffee. I've got some on the No, show. no, I don't want... It. Yes, yes, um... Yes, Helen, maybe you're right. Coffee would be, um, a good idea, I guess. I had an idea now. It would take her a little while to prepare the coffee. And at least she was out of the room. I went right to my desk, got the waste paper basket from underneath it, and started to look through it. It wasn't there. I looked at my watch again. It was still all right. I had an hour. But time was getting close. And while I was still looking through the basket, Helen came back. Alec, what are you doing? Did you take something out of this basket? No. Now, here's your coffee. Well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a piece of paper with figures on it. You sure you didn't see it around? A positive. Now, what can be so important about a piece of paper? Because it's important. Wait a minute. Here it is, under the desk. That's what you wanted? Yes. Well, thank goodness. Now, maybe you'll sit down and have your coffee and peace. What? Well, why do you keep looking at your watch? I, uh, I have an appointment. Alec, I want to know what's going on. Nothing is going on. I just didn't expect you home, so I made an appointment. I don't mean just that. You said you're not going up to the lake tomorrow. Well, why? And, and that piece of paper you were so frantic about. Alec, what all is right, it? All right, all right, all right, Helen, all right. I guess I, I might as well tell you everything now. There is something going on. It's the office. But you're on vacation. Well, it's 8.20, and I, I have an appointment. With whom? With a man who's, who's talking about... Going into the investment business with me. And I, I'm supposed to spend the weekend with him at his place out on the island. Never mentioned this before. Well, it's a deal that I've been working on for a long time. I, I didn't want to say anything until it was all set. You wanted to surprise me? Yes, yes. I, I've been on edge about it, too. That's why I was upset when I found you here. And the piece of paper? There are confidential figures that I, I needed. Well, I won't say I'm not disappointed, but if this deal means so much... It I... means everything, Helen. It's my one big chance. If this falls through, I'll never have another. I know that. If, if I fail now, I'll be stuck the rest of my life. And Helen, look, just in case I, I don't get up to the lake by Monday, don't you worry. But you said the weekend... Well, it may take longer. I, I sent you a letter up at the lake telling you all about it. You would have gotten it in the morning. I didn't want you to think that something had happened to me when I didn't show up tomorrow. But Helen, Alec... Helen, trust me. Believe me. Well, why shouldn't I trust... Helen. I absolutely cannot be late. I'll get it. No, 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 let me. Hello. As I, I'm just leaving. Yes, yes, I found it. No, there's nothing to worry about. Who is it? Oh, that's right, Mr. Sanders. I'll, uh, I'll be there on time. I'm sorry to rush out, darling, but believe me, this is vital. I was out. I was on the street. I had over 50 minutes to get to the boat. The telltale slip of paper was in my pocket. There was no cab around. Right next door was a bar. Would I have time for a drink? I needed one. I looked in. There was only one other customer. That was perfect. I went in. Brandy, please, and I'm in a hurry. Okay, bud. Now, what do I owe you? Ninety cents. I'll keep the change. Thanks. Just a second, right, Now, excuse me, but I'll I... tell you. Get your hands on the bar. You guessed it? This is sticker. Now, look, I've got to get out of here. Take my money, but let me go. The guy with the gun gives the orders, pal. Relax and hand over your wallet. All right, but just give me money for cab fare. You sure are nervous. Please give me a break. I'm giving it to you. You ain't hurt. Now, both of you. 
Take off your pants. What? Don't give me no trouble. Off with your pants and lay down on the floor. I don't want to be in no hurry when I walk out of here. Now, listen, listen, please. Listen to me. You've got to listen to me. I am sailing for Europe. Look, look. Now, look, here, here is my passport. I have to make a boat. This is one boat you're going to miss, pal. I can't. Now, look, how, how much did you make in here? A couple of hundred dollars? Not as good as that. You only have 70 in your wallet. Well, I'll give you a thousand dollars. What? I swear it. I swear it. I will give you a thousand dollars if you'll just come to the boat with me. How do I know you're on the level? Now, here. Here, you can hold my passport. Now, here, take it. But please, let's get out of here and get a cab. I have got to make that boat. A thousand bucks? I promise you. But we have got to get there before the boat sails or else I won't have the money. Okay, pal. You got a deal. out of the bar. A man with a gun wouldn't run. I looked at my watch. Forty-six minutes. Thought it was plenty of time. Half hour to the boat, the most. And there would be time to get him on board, give him his thousand, get rid of him. I even began to enjoy the situation. It wasn't likely that he'd report anything to the police. I only made good time. And then, we were in my stateroom. Okay, pal. Where is it? It's right here. I'll get it for you. Just have to open this bag. Never mind. Just hand me the bag. What? I said just hand me the bag. But you... But you want the thousand dollars. It's in here. I have to take it out and I'll get... take your word for it, pal. Just hand over the bag. Now look. Look. Wait a minute. You can't Listen, take... Listen, pal. That whistle will blow. will pop the sound of any shot. Now, are you going to give me the bag? All right, here. There it is. Thanks, pal. You're being real smart. On voyage. All right, get me the purser, quickly. Hurry. Who is it? Me, Celia. Well, come in. What is it? What happened? I heard voices in here. What are you doing on the phone? Nothing. I'm not doing anything on the phone. Who was the man in here with you? A hold-up man. A hold-up man? Yes. He took the $200,000. But you were going to stop him. You were going to call... Yes, I was, but how do I do it? Do I tell the purser or the captain that there's $200,000 in cash in the bag that that man is taking off the ship? No, Celia, we're trapped. We're moving. We're moving, Alex. Now, what's the difference? We're not going anywhere. Suspense. You've been listening to Bon Voyage, written for Suspense by Murray Burnett. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Heard in tonight's story were Bob Reddick as Alex and Rita Lloyd as Celia, with Mary Moore as Ellen, and Joseph Julian, Dan Ocko, and Alan Manson. Listen again next week when we return with Reports from a Dead Planet by George Bamber. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The Kingston Trio next, followed by CBS News, then have gun will travel on CBS Radio.